I got a post on Facebook asking for a more scientific approach to food. And the, the spirit of the message was one of confusion. He signed off the message with, uh, heaven only knows how this all works out. And I think he was basically saying that if we can just get a scientific understanding of food, then all of the questions, all of the gray areas and the question marks will fade away. I will finally understand what I can and can't eat. Why do you need to understand food at that scientific level. As I am talking now, I am talking into a camera, okay, and my digital image is being recorded onto a memory card, and my voice is being recorded into this microphone, and this microphone is wireless, so it's wirelessly being transmitted into a receiver over there, and in a minute I will edit it on a machine over there. The sun is beaming in through the window, and the sun is like a, a kind of reactor that never needs a charging plug, but never runs out of energy. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't know how any of this stuff works but I'm still benefiting from all of it. I'm still using all of it. If I flick the switch in my apartment, the light comes on, I don't understand electricity, but I still benefit from it. And in the same token, you don't need to understand what's going on in the soles of your fruits and vegetables in order to benefit from them. All you have to do is pick them up, eat them, and that gets the job done. And if you think, hang on a second, that's a cop-out because people who don't understand what to eat get sick, and people who are getting sick are dying, and if science could just solve, answer the question, please, what is it that we eat, then we could save hundreds of thousands or millions of lives. I would push back against that and say, well, just look, we live today in a more scientific time than any other time in human history. Now, if you don't believe me, just walk into your local supermarket, walk down an aisle, and you'll see things like polyphenols, carotenoids, sodium, omega-3s, cholesterol. These are all offshoots of science. They've all come about since we've started meshing science with food. Now, in that time, what has happened to our health? What has happened to our state of obesity and heart disease and cancer? Before we had this scientific approach to food, when milk just had milk written on the side and cheese just had cheese written on the side, what was our health then? What, did we, what was the state of cancer? What was the state of diabetes? Science isn't the solution to the health crisis. Science is one of the causes of it. Science is the thing that helps sell the foods that make us sick. If I held up here a bag of white bread, okay, there's nothing in white bread. All of the good stuff in the grain has been removed. It's just the starchy sugar molecules. There's nothing in it, nothing good in, in white bread. But if I wrote on this packet, protein bread, and I put under that now with extra omega-3s, suddenly you're thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, I might eat that bread because it has these scientific terms on it. Science is the reason why we now eat so many processed foods. Science are those, those little uh, verification labels on the side of processed foods that make us think that this junk food has now become healthy. <laughs> Getting hungry and eating is probably the longest standing system in the history of all living things. It's something so natural to all of us. When we get hungry, we look for food and we eat. There's 8.3 million species on the planet. Only one cannot figure out how to eat. And it has only figured out how not to eat in the last few decades. What changed in the last few decades? Science. It's created chaos in our food. Chaos is a ladder. And the companies that climb that ladder are the companies that sell the food because they use the science and the scientific jargon to sell more processed crap. <laughs> post on Facebook ended with the theory that it was bad fats. It, in exasperation, it kind of said, it must be bad fats. Um, I think that's what it is. It's not bad fats. Okay, for sure, bad fats are a demonstrably unhealthy food uh, stuff, a processed, refined, man-made fats, no good for you. But sugar is also no good for you. No nutritional benefit, rots your teeth. It's the, the, the number one fuel for cancer. Uh, salt in very high quantities, it raises your blood pressure. It can give you heart, or it can get, be involved in like heart attacks and stuff. That's no good for you. But when you attack something like fat or sugar or salt, you're attacking the foot soldier. You're not going for the root. Look, if you attack fat and you come to the conclusion that it's bad fats, the food companies will make fat-free foods. So you go out and you rush out and you eat all these fat-free foods and it's just more processed food. So you think, well, it must be sugar. So you attack sugar and you go after sugar. So the food companies create sugar-free foods. Now what happens when you go after a foot soldier and they create a food that doesn't have that in it, so they create sugar-free foods, you think, well, we'll eat loads of sugar-free foods, but it's still processed food. What are you doing? When you start looking at food in terms of nutrients, when you start looking at food in terms of, well, it doesn't have sugar in it, so it must be healthy. You stop looking at the one thing that counts, and that is 
Is that food real or is it fake? That is the baddie. Is the food processed? Is it refined? Is it fake food? That is what is causing us problems. That is the key to health and unhealth in terms of our food. And when you're going around looking at whether something has a specific nutrient in it or not, you're forgetting whether to look at whether something is real or fake. Mars, age, no more.